Who won the year, Marvel or DC? What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. Today I'm giving you my ranking of all the 2022 comic book movies slash superhero movies. There are seven of these movies, but before I give you guys my ranking, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite and least favorite comic book movie from the year, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified for all my future rankings. I got a lot of end of the year ones coming very soon. But without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get into this ranking. Coming in dead last for me is Thor Love and Thunder. This is my least favorite MCU movie. I don't like this movie at all. It's extremely unrewatchable. I just made that word up, I think. But also, it has like no redeeming quality. It's painfully unfunny. They completely waste Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher. And the movie never takes itself seriously, in my opinion, which is really unfortunate because it was one of my most anticipated movies of this year and actually my most anticipated MCU movie because I love the direction they were taking Thor's character in Endgame and Infinity War, and especially in Thor Ragnarok. But I feel like this movie was a complete disservice to this character and just a massive miss for the MCU. Just above this, I actually have Morbius. Now, I know Morbius is terrible, I'm fully aware of that, but this movie actually is so bad that you can watch it and have some enjoyment with it, because you can make fun of it. It's one of those movies, and that's why I have it above Love and Thunder. I think it'd be more rewatchable if you got together with a group of friends and poked fun at it, as opposed to Love and Thunder, which is trying to be a good movie. We also have Matt Smith dancing, which has become one of the best memes of the year for sure, but the movie's bad. It's, it feels like an early 2000s lost superhero movie that somehow got released in 2022. Maybe makes no sense that this movie came out. It was delayed multiple times and it was like doomed from the start almost. Don't enjoy this movie, but I can make fun of it. And that's why I enjoy it more than Love and Thunder. Next on my list is Black Adam. Talk about a movie that's generic as hell. This is one of the most run-of-the-mill comic movies that's come out in the last decade. The Rock is, you know, delivering these one-liners that are just so cheesy. I stand by this. I think Black Adam has the worst comic book movie villain of all time. I don't even remember the character's name because it was so throwaway, but there is just non-stop action in this movie. And I'm a big proponent of action and movies. I love a good action scene, but when your entire movie is massive CGI battles, you kind of lose track of the story and why we're actually here watching this movie. That's exactly what happened in Black Adam. The only thing missing at the end of this was directed by Michael Bay with a Linkin Park song, What I've Done. There are moments where I was entertained, but the movie is so forgettable. Number four for me is actually DC League of Super Pets, an animated superhero movie that came out back in the summer. This movie has its fun moments. I personally was pretty bored through a lot of it just because it's definitely targeted for that young kid audience. And if I was growing up when this movie came out, watch it when I was like five, six, seven, eight years old, I probably would have loved this. Obviously now it's just like, eh, not really for me. And I get that. I definitely liked how they had the Justice League though and their pets. Like it was a cool dynamic to see. And there were, you know, heartwarming moments here, but it's just a movie that again, kind of forgettable for me. Not like terrible by any means, but it just exists. Number three on my list is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, a movie that has, you know, flashes of brilliance. Sam Raimi back in the director's chair. You love to see it. He's got a cool vision, especially, you know, some of the horror shots with Wanda being just disturbing, honestly, the way she kind of climbs through that mirror in that one scene, you know what I'm talking about? It gives me the heebie-jeebies. And of course, the Illuminati scene is one of my favorite from the MCU this year. Seeing Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, Professor X is back. It was great for about 10 minutes, and then all of that was crushed and literally shredded. In my opinion, they should have just made a Wanda solo project and a Doctor Strange movie because it feels like it's clashing constantly and no one really gets their time to shine here. I also really don't like how they kind of throw away the Doctor Strange 2016 post credit scene. I don't love the way this movie wraps up. It has, again, moments that I enjoy. America Chavez is a highlight new character in the MCU for sure, but Multiverse of Madness was a pretty big disappointment in my opinion. They definitely didn't explore the multiverse as much as they could have. My second favorite comic movie of 2022 is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I think this movie's really solid. You know, the first time I saw it, I watched it way too late at night. I was kind of dozing off, but I went back and saw it again in theaters and I appreciated it a lot more. It does a great job of continuing the legacy of Chadwick Boseman. There are moments here that will break your heart. You know, Shuri taking on the new mantle of Black Panther and Namor being one of the best phase four villains without question. They fully flesh him out here. We get so much of a rich backstory on him. You can almost see exactly where he's coming from. And the movie continues to expand and build on that lore of Wakanda, just like the first one did. Now I stand by this. The movie's two hours and 40 minutes and that is really unnecessary. I think there are pockets of this movie where I'm just like, what are we doing right now? We don't really need to be spending this much time on the scene where, you know, moments feel drawn out, whether that be the Nakia storyline or like when Shuri and Rhea Williams are held captive. There are moments like that to just overextend their stay, in my opinion. But I do appreciate that this movie is planting seeds for phase five because that's what the early phases in the MCU did. They planted seeds for what would be to come in later MCU projects without making the whole movie about that, essentially. Rhea Williams stole the show here. I can't wait for the Ironheart show. And of course, that opening bridge action scene, like the first act, is my favorite scene in the entire movie. The score also slaps, and this movie's a lot better than I originally gave it credit for, but it's not as good as the first Black Panther, in my opinion. But no surprise here, my favorite comic book movie of 2022 is The Batman. I saw this movie three times in theaters. It's my personal favorite Batman movie, and Robert Pattinson is the best Batman 
in my eyes. This is the first time we've gotten like a detective epic Batman movie where he's a detective on the case, you know, tracking down the serial killer essentially in the movie. And it's very unsettling. The opening of this movie when we first see Riddler was a jump scare if I've ever seen one. This score by Michael Giacchino is a masterpiece of a score. I've listened to it so many times since March. It gives me chills. It's uplifting. It does everything to me. It makes me tingle. <laughs> We've got Penguin played wonderfully by Colin Farrell with his comedic lines. Gordon and Batman might be the best we've ever seen them in this with Jeffrey Wright absolutely killing it. We actually get to see them be partners tracking down these different clues on the case. We've got the crime side with Carmine Falcone. There's so much to love here. It really dives into Gotham City, making Gotham a character. The aesthetic of this movie is gorgeous. It's just a very well-made movie. And if you like darker, like murder mysteries, this is definitely up your alley because that's exactly what it is. And we finally got to see that. I love the Arkham video games. They're some of my favorite of all time. Time. feels like they basically took a story from that and put it on the big screen. Shout out Matt Reeves for making the definitive Batman movie. But that's just my ranking of all the 2022 comic book movies slash superhero movies. Definitely let me know yours in the comments down below. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and answer this question for me. Who won the year, Marvel or DC? But thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.